There we go. Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast, or Wrestling YouTube Show. I still have to figure out the podcast a little bit. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend, again, having kind of car issues, and I think she works all week. But we will hear from her on Wednesday, though, because Wednesday we have the prediction, the predictions. And I won't be here. I'm going to invite my good friend, Dr. Keller. To come in and do predictions, I think. He'll kind of explain the math a little bit. Or as he calls them. Let's take a guess. Sometimes he'll flip a coin. My girlfriend figures out whoever has the nicest looking trunks. I don't know. It's pro wrestling. And I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. Um, before that, just some scheduling notes. Um, again, this will probably go up tomorrow morning. So again, it's kind of the normal range. You have Raw going up tomorrow. SmackDown going up probably Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon-ish. Well, that's right, because I don't have to do anything there. Plus work for a hobo Tom to do. That makes me happy. So Wednesday afternoon, you're going to get predictions. Probably from Dr. Keller. And my girlfriend. A second. Also, my girlfriend, Dr. Keller. Um, that and probably Friday, I'm going to do some Lucha Underground, a Lucha Underground video. Friday or Saturday? Probably Friday. And then Sunday is going to be Hell in a Cell. That's September 16th. I'll be up live streaming. I mean, just to figure out when I work. Give a more accurate time. I think going to the next NXT event in Sanford. That's the 21st. So then probably by the 23rd, I'll have the Sanford NXT video up. For some reason, my video card is giving me issues. I have to do things the old-fashioned way, I guess. Hopefully they won't take my camera from me. Jack has some security guy. But let's talk about some SmackDown. Um, this was a go home show for Raw. It was okay. It wasn't anything special. Um, I guess one of the highlights of this is that Renee Young is now full time as the announcer. Uh, coaching, I think, is doing something on golf on the Golf Channel. Hey, if he's moving up in the world, that's what he wants to do. Power to him. Uh, it starts off with kind of your basic promo. You have Dolph Ziggler and Drew Barry. It's a Drew Barrymore. It's been a long day. Uh, but Drew McIntyre shows up. It'd be interesting if Drew Barrymore shows up. Is she still acting? I don't know. Send me an email or comment. And Drew Barrymore, who's that? Girl, you might not remember her. It was my age, I guess. Again, so we have Dolph and Drew, and eventually Braun comes out. They do a promo. So all the heels, who obviously Mike Kanellis is a heel now. And so they all made their choices, and they are all their Braun's dogs of war versus the Hounds of Justice. Hey, they had to come up with some name. Oh, I look slim. I do want to get that new Macho Man shirt I saw. That looks nice. I sent that to two people as a Christmas gift request. And I still have to figure out if I'm going to get my girlfriend either The Girl with the Shiniest Wizard by Nixon Newell. And Nixon Newell, not whatever her name is. She'll always be Nixon Newell to me. Or the b -b -b Bullet Babe. For life. T-shirt. Of Amber O'Neill Gallows. But, well, more to the point again, the Shield come out. The sh Did the Shield get new music? It sounded different, at least to me. It sounded more like Rage Against the Machine, which is good because, again, if they're going to come out, they could use a little bit of new, new repackaging. Uh, they come out, Dean Ambrose has a bag full of X handles. Whatever happened to the axe heads, I have no idea. But three guys with some weapons clears out a whole bunch of heels. And some pretty big heels at that. 
And then, of course, they're threatened to be taken away unless they vacate. Roman vacates. Oh, well, supposedly. We'll get into that later. Nonsense legalities of that. Um, the first match, we have Nikki Bella versus Ruby Riot. And, I mean, that was nothing special. I mean, it was a good wrestling match. I mean, Nikki Bella, I don't know. There's just a stigma to her. So I think, actually, it was reported, oh, geez, almost a year ago. It's been that long? Or was it over the... Was it? Well, I don't want to say like she, it was reported that she was at a Tampa... Gentlemen's Club, dancing on stage to pole. Or at least some, or at least a lookalike. Again, I think that's when she was seeing John Cena. And I forget if that's when they were kind of on the ropes. The relationship was on the ropes. Was was on the fritz. I don't know. That's just one thing I heard on the internet. Someone took like pictures of like this person who looks amazingly like Nikki Bella in Nikki Bella outfit at a strip club. So again, take of it what you will. I mean, not, she's not a bad wrestler. Not a great wrestler though. I don't know. I think I, again, I I didn't see the Bellas wrestle. This is when I kind of got phased out of pro wrestling and just the storylines got. Ew. Um, although Nikki Bella does have to learn to tie her top better. Then her top was coming undone. Almost fell out. She did. Was it her or Brie Bella that that happened to once? I forget. One of them. One of them showed stuff. These years ago on TV. Ten years ago. Maybe. And then they shouldn't. She should not really wear those tight latex pants. A little, little camel toe down there. Or you can at least see the parting Red Sea. That's a good one. I like that. I think that's gonna go up there with seeing a full ember moon. That's my other good line. The full ember moon. The parting of the Red Sea. Jeez, what I could get away with my beautiful, most amazing, very wholesome girlfriend's not here with me. But it was an okay match. It was a ham sandwich match. Nothing spectacular. Um, again, the Riot Squad try to get involved. I mean, if they, I don't, I just don't know why they're they're jobbing out Ruby Riot. I know it's probably to push the Bellas. I don't know why they would push the Bellas, but it is what it was. And they had some Connor Cure stuff. Again, it's a good cause. I can't can't knock WWE for for doing good causes. And then there's a recap between the Heartbreak Kid and the Undertaker segment. Then the Authors of Pain came out. Again, Drake Maverick. Now the Authors of Pain seems to have new gear. They have like the army pads, but more kind of shoulder padish instead of like the traditional vest. And, and whoever they were facing, I didn't even catch the other guy's name. I just know Ace. Drake Maverick looked bigger than Ace. I mean, it was a squash match. I just want to see them get in contention for the title and all this. Although it is good. Between all this stuff between Dolph and Drew. And... Maybe good to see the revival. Ooh, yeah. Get involved again. Get another classic tag team. Revival versus AOP would be good. Just like it was in NXT. Not that hard. All the NXT formula. Follow the NXT algorithm. 
Because I have the algorithm to how to get good matches. And it's obviously not what they're doing, especially in the raw tag team division. So it's really weird. And there was a Triple H promo. Then you have Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler versus the B team. And that first hour took forever. I think it felt like an hour and a half. You have a ham sandwich match. Oh, by the way, because it was a squash match, the authors of pain match was a can of soup. I mean, you knew what was going to happen. Not even a ham sandwich. Soup. Bad. Um, but then again, Drew and Dolph versus the B team. I mean, Drew's there just really to stop any momentum the other tag team has, and Dolph's there to, to make to make the other team look more believable. I mean, he, he takes the bumps, gets the hot tag into Drew. I just don't want to see this being the formula all the time because eventually it's, it's good for right now, but if this is a formula they're going to keep on using, it's going to get boring and it's going to be lackluster. Um, with Drew McIntyre, they could do so much. With Dolph Ziggler, they could do so much. I do like it when they were just dominating teams, and that was fun. It was good. Um, again, it was a good back and forth. I mean, take nothing away from Curtis Axel and, and Bo Dallas. Both Axel and Dallas are very good wrestlers. I mean, they both have a. They're both. I, I want to say Curtis Axel's third generation. Bo Dallas, I, I want to say second generation. I know his father is Mike Rotundo. It was IRS BK Wall Street. It was also Mike Rotundo of the old the old varsity club. And again, Curtis Axel's father is Kurt Hennig. And then his grandfather was also a wrestler. I just forget the grandfather's name though. That goes back a while. Probably if I watched some old A W A WCCW or WWWF, you probably see Curtis Axel's grandfather wrestling. But yeah, it was a good match. I mean, hey, I give Bo Dallas all the credit in the world. He gets in there, does does what he's supposed to do. So does Curtis Axel, and they put on a good show. This was a cheeseburger match. Eventually, the Shield, well, not the, sh not the Shield, but Dean Ambrose and Seth jump in and start to beat up Dolph and Drew. Hmm. Again, there was, I think later in the show, there was a little thing where they weren't technically the Shield. Lawyers and cops and, I don't know. It was okay. Mick Foley then comes out, or there's a tease to the Mick Foley. Helen will sell package. And you have Kevin Owens versus Tyler Breeze. I thought I would never say this about Kevin Owens, but this was a ham sandwich. I mean, he just beat up Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze tried. KO just kind of, he tries to explain his actions, which is good. Because he said he quit, but then, oh, well, I got a call back saying, Saying I was back to be back, and I'm taking out all my frustration on Bobby Lashley. Tyler Breeze is series in my way. I'm going to do what I feel like doing now. I think um, the best that Corey Graves said said Kevin Owens has carte blanche to do what he wants to do. Um, Corey Graves and Young are are trying to develop a little bit of chemistry. I mean, Renee's good on the mic. Don't get me wrong; she still has a little bit of work to do. That's mainly because she has to figure out heel face dynamics. Again, Corey Graves can probably walk her through everything. Again, they, they do kind of bicker back and forth, and it is getting better, and it seems more natural, though. Um, then the next match, you have Rude and Gable versus the Acolytes again. Didn't we just see this match? No, it was Acolytes versus Lashley. Who did Rude and Gable get? I forget now. 
Could have been that much. Um, but again, they face the Acolytes. It's a ham sandwich. It's not a bad match. Um, it has the more confident, cocky, but confident Chad Gable teaming up with the experienced ring veteran of Bobby Root. And the two of them are beginning to gel a little bit more. Every so often, Gable gets a little cocky and does the blind tag. The Acolytes still do great tag team work. They, they, they kind of know that they're there. They understand tag team dynamics, how to double team, things like that. Gable and Root are just doing kind of basic stuff. Acolytes are a little bit more advanced. They're at the 300 level of tag team wrestling, whereas Root and Gable are at the 100 level. Yeah, overall, it's, it's, a, good, it's, a, it's a good match. I mean, they're beginning to mesh a little bit. It was a ham sandwich match. Then you have Alexa Bliss and Mickey James with Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox is the best of. She was in some like brown glitter sequin outfit with a bedazz brown sequin bedazzled captain's hat. She's just funny. Also a native Florida, I think she lives actually up in Ponte Vedra, the rich part of Florida, folks. Well, at least the rich part of Northeast Florida. There are places, I think, West Palm Beach, parts of South Beach. Ooh, yeah, that's money. Um, again, I get distracted. Alexa Bliss and Mickey James, they took on Natalia and Ronda Rousey. And, again, Alexa Bliss knows how to do the heel Yano and into the ropes to escape anything. Break, break, break. It's the same. It's the same principle. She doesn't say go break, 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 but she's just like that. Ah, as she goes into the ropes. So it's the same principle. Yana is just good. He said, "I think he's one of my favorite New Japan pro." My my New Japan. If I saw him, that'd be that would tickle me really good. Naito's good too. I just like the way he abused that belt. <laughs> and abuses the ref. He's like, "Open these ropes for y'all. I'll just roll in." Man, it was good. I mean, Natalia's good. I mean, I, I think she's at that stage of a wrestler's career where she really can't put on a bad match. Um, Rousey's good. Again, Natalia and Rousey, they're doing some good tag team work. Basic tag team work, but at least it's still there. Um, Rousey's getting good at selling, too. You no, know, they were attacking Rousey's ribs. And... Again, it was good. Ronda's realizing, oh, when, when I get kicked in the ribs, I have to over-press myself. Although, beware of the rib tape. <laughs> the DDP <laughs> tape. That, 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 he had ribs that never seemed to heal. So every week, he wore the same rib tape. It's like, you know, I've, I've hurt ribs before. Trust me, rib tape does absolutely nothing. Nothing for, for ribs. It makes it hurt worse. I know I've torn intercostal muscles in the ribs before. That just hurts to breathe. And forget about... But I mean, tape's not going to do anything. Tape probably constricts the ribs more. But they don't have their natural flow. And the only thing... I don't think you can really put a cast on the ribs either. Just one of those things the doctor kind of sets and says, well, tough luck. Or they might put like a band, like a, they might tape it up, but that's just really just to kind of add a layer of protection to it. But to tape up the whole rib, it's nothing. It's nothing you can do about a broken rib. You just have to kind of let the doctor set it, hope it, do hope it doesn't puncture anything. And again, you tear an intercostal muscle, done that. Never want to do it again. But so she's selling, and the heels, Alexa Bliss and Mickey James do heel things. And I mean, this was a good, good match. It was a cheeseburger match.
Natalia and Ronda Rousey did go over. So we'll see how this bodes for the Hell in the Cell. And then I think, oh, here we go. Braun's hunting around the, the arena for Roman Reigns. Ronda Rousey. And yeah, my ribs hurt. I've dealt with pain before. Quick interview there. Then Elias. He's there every show. He might be the real workhorse of WWE. He might not have a match, but he's there all the time. Granted, he has kind of the same shtick. But it's good. He delivers it in a little bit different ways. Um, then McFoley comes out, and McFoley announces he's going to be the special guest referee between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns for their Hell in a Cell match. I was curious, though. I wonder if they're going to have two Hell in a Cell matches, though. So I don't know who the second one would be from Raw. I don't think they would. I don't think they would stick Ronda Rousey in a in Hell in a Cell so soon. And then on SmackDown, they have probably AJ Samoa Joe. They might put Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in a steel cage in, in the um, Hell in a Cell. And Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell. Mick Foley needs to referee that match. Because if anyone's going to do anything dopey inside a Hell of a Cell or outside Hell of a Cell, to the outside, outside of Hell in a Cell, to the outside, or the top of Hell in a Cell, to the inside. I hope I didn't give him any ideas. It's going to be Jeff Hardy. And Mick Foley will tell him how best to take those bumps. Make sure the airbag's there. Ball in the middle of the ring, not by the corner. Make sure they cut that fence. And not go through it the hard way. Make sure you do not land on the phone. He'll probably give so many so much advice. Just to hear about what and I know he's probably mentioned in his book and he's talked about it, just to figure out what was going through his mind during that whole match, because the Undertaker honestly looked like he killed him. And he's like, Oh my god. I just killed a man. But that happens all the time in Lucha Underground. You already witnessed murders on TV in Lucha Underground. But again, this led to a Finn versus Elias match. And this was actually really fun. And this was really like the main event match. It was good. It was a cheeseburger match. I mean, again, it's the classic storytelling. You have the big versus small, the power versus the speed. That's sometimes all you need. Again, Renee's getting really good on the mic. I mean, you can hear week by week that she's making really good improvements. She's developing more of a rapport with Michael Cole and Corey Graves. Cole's now that kind of middle in between to keep the, the two balanced. So you have, you have the, the, the true face in Renee Young, the true heel. And Corey Graves, and then in the middle of Michael Cole, and he kind of keeps things even, which which is good. And again, it was it was good. Finn Balor wins on a roll up, and Elias, you get the finger wag because you did not go to Wrestling Defense 102, how to defend a roll up. But again, that's how smart people tend to win. I mean, he, Finn's obviously not going to overpower. The bigger, more powerful allies. So you have to, you have to kind of buy fast, sneaky ways. Again, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. And then you have the final kind of real main event. Braun Strowman calls out Roman Reigns. Da da, da da, da da da. And Roman's music hits, which is different from the Shield music. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, and you can do that by leaving a comment or emailing me at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com but it just seems like the shield at least has new music whereas Roman still has his old music Roman stood tall I don't know this is going to be weird we'll have to find out from Dr. Keller how things turn out or what his predictions shall be probably on Wednesday see you on my girlfriend and why is she getting predictions from him Intriguing, indeed.
I would like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I am about 25 views away from 2,000 views, which I think is absolutely amazing. I would like to thank everyone for your 2,000 views. And again, when I hit the 2,000 views, I will have a 2,000 view party. Tell us some tacos.